to play? That was a great question because he mentioned yesterday the back and next to this this morning he was out there a little bit after seven he looks fine we didn't see him stretching or, or looking as if he had a stiff back at all i talked to his swing coach sean foley who was also out on the driving range this morning told me he thought woods looked fine in warm-ups the question now though is we'll see as i mentioned it's been an hour and a half since the third fight here we'll see if this delay causes him to uh, to get stiff at all once they do come back out and one thing to keep an eye on is the two times recently that woods has complained about having a stiff back once at the PGA a couple of weeks ago, and once at this very tournament last year, both of those times he didn't play particularly well that yeah, weekend. Yeah, so he yeah. says he'll, he'll be fine. So, he obviously yeah, tried to so, downplay the yeah. issue. He looks fine this morning, but we'll see how he scores this weekend. And I want to clarify, it wasn't the wrist injury, it was the elbow in this case. So I'm going to the box from the yeah. legs from the round one right now, suspended because of the weather at the Barclays in Jersey City. Aaron Hernandez is expected back in court for a probable cause hearing later today. Last month, a judge granted a delay in the hearing that prosecutors wanted more time to present evidence to a grand jury. Hernandez has pleaded not guilty to Owen Lloyd's June 17th murder. Police continue to search for the gun used to kill Owen Lloyd. Hernandez's cousin, Tanya Cummings Singleton, has been arrested for failing to appear before a grand jury, and police have recovered a gun. They say is linked to a pair of unsolved murders in Boston in 2012. Now, Hernandez has been held without bail now for almost two months since being arrested on June 26th. Our Michelle Steele is in Attleboro, Massachusetts for today's scheduled court date. Michelle, what do you expect to happen there? Good morning, Sarah. We will get another look, our second look at Aaron Hernandez later today uh, for the second time since he has been arrested for this probable cause hearing. Now, as you mentioned, last month prosecutors asked for a delay. They asked for a continuance, essentially stop the clock as they offer more evidence to a grand jury. We'll find out later today if more time was enough time that they needed to get that grand jury indictment. One of three things can happen today, according to the legal experts that I've been talking to. One is uh, we get another continuance. The prosecutors say that they need more time. This will doubtlessly anger Aaron Hernandez's defense team. Remember, at the time last month, when they got when they got that continuance granted, the defense team argued, listen, the prosecutors decided when to arrest this guy. The prosecutors presented that case as a very strong case at the time, and they have not presented a single shred of evidence before a judge uh, justifying why Hernandez has been held in a jail, such as shelter and confinement, as they as they put it, uh, for about eight weeks. The second thing that could possibly happen, as I mentioned, a grand jury indictment, an indictment might, might be returned. That would basically table this probable cause hearing, and this would get kicked up to Superior Court, he'd be arraigned all over again. The third thing that could happen, the least likely scenario today, is that we actually get a probable cause hearing with witnesses and cross-examination, but Sarah, that is seen as very, uh, not very likely, and is seen as much more formality in this case. Needless to say, we will get some status update as far as where this case stands. We'll definitely see Hernandez, we'll see his defense team, the prosecution, his fiance likely, Shiana Jenkins, who's been increasingly a focus of where the weapon is, and uh, finally, we will see the family of Odin Lloyd, who has been at every single court appearance for Hernandez. Michelle, the general consensus up to this point has been that we would have a grand jury indictment by now. What is the whole of this? It's been absolutely one of the most puzzling parts of covering the story. You know, a law professor at Suffolk Law School here in Massachusetts told me even with just the evidence that has been made public to this point, in his estimation, he can get a grand jury indictment in about an hour. But given that, one of the reasons the one is that we do know that Eric Hernandez has considerable resources, has a very, very uh, uh, impressive legal team to defend his hands, and the prosecutors are going to want to cross every T and dot every single I, make sure that their case is as strong as possible. We also know that it's sometimes more efficient to gather evidence in a uh, grand jury presentment as opposed to an actual trial in the middle of this November. Aaron Hernandez has had two relatives die in single vehicles, car crashes in the Bristol, Connecticut area. One of those men was wanted for questioning. He died before uh, detectives were able to question him. So, 2 o'clock today, Aaron Hernandez is expected to appear. We'll produce that to you. And what happens here at the Lord of And what do you know? A lot of scenarios did play today. We felt it was very late. Thank you, but that's it. Out of the world, that was
Sarah, highlight of the morning takes us to the Bronx each hero. One hit shy, 4,000 in his pro career. Yankees, Blue Jays, here's Joe Girardi. I've been 4,000 hits my whole career. He's the best team of
I studied Russell Wilson. I saw him get better every single week. And we all know the quarterback position is a dependent position. You depend on other people to help you do your job. And the Seattle Seahawks have an outstanding supporting cast around Russell Wilson. And their offensive runner, Daryl Bevel, did a terrific job of bringing Russell Wilson along last season. And remember, he didn't get the starting job until late in the preseason. Now they've had a whole offseason to build this offense around Russell Wilson, build the play action passing game, the push play game, the spread option run, the downfield throwing, play to his strength. I think Russell Wilson has a big year with this fine Seahawks team. Who do you think best avoids the sophomore slump? I love Russell Wilson. Who doesn't love Russell Wilson? But I think you go to Angela Luck, the number one overall pick in the draft last year. I remember last year when the preseason was wrapping up for his rookie year, there were people in the Colts organization who felt at that time that he would be a top five quarterback in the league. Last year, last year, and he came close to doing that. And in his second year, in an offense room by Pat Hamilton, who was his offensive coordinator at Stanford, Andrew Luck should be even better. T.Y. built has emerged as a real threat at wide receiver, a playmaker for him. They've added Ahmad Bradshaw, even though he has some practice. He's a gamer, so they've got some running backs, they've got some wide receivers, and they've got the next generation of a great quarterback right there. And so it's imagine that one city to go from Peyton Manning to Andrew Luck with one year in between. It's unbelievable. Uh, they have had terrific luck with quarterbacks. And while we are talking about quarterbacks, Jaws made a little news yesterday for some comments he made about Colin Kaepernick. Let's take a listen to what you had to say. Colin Kaepernick could be one of the greatest quarterbacks ever. I love his skill set. He throws with accuracy. And oh, he's had a bad man. He has to have he lasers, He's got son. all those attributes. Look, and here's what I love. He gets coached hard. When you look at the team, he understands the quarterback position. Look, before Travis made the play, one of the most important things ever. Here's what Kaepernick said about those comments. Today, 
I'm working. Uh, to me, it's a great honor to accept that. Uh, very flattered by it, but at the same time, I haven't played a full season yet. I, I really like the response. I think you're yeah, actually, I'm like, like that. He's been just 10 career starts. What are you seeing that gives you that kind of feeling and gives that guy that kind of grace so early in his career? First of all, sir, I agree with you. I love the humility aspect. We handled that press conference when that question was asked exactly the way you're supposed to handle it. Be humble. But when you look at Colin Kaepernick, so I watched him in the offseason, what you see is the deep ball. And that's critical. The minute he got the starting job against Chicago on a Monday night last year, we saw this style of passing game deep down the field. He read the one-on-one -on -one coverage here. He has Kyle Wilson on the corner row. Watch this throw, folks. Not many guys make this throw. So it's an out of the box. This is a long handoff. That is well done. Mobility is a major part of today's NFL at the quarterback position. Colin Kaepernick brings that the Packers saw this in the playoff game. Look at Walton. Look at the ball is back here. Here's what you really got to love about Kaepernick. Four, five, speed, 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 speed,
very hard because it all seems like uh, a summer ago, no one knew anything about Johnny Manziel, at least outside of Texas. We've seen this now with the Heisman winners the last four years, Cam Newton, RG3, and Manziel. Guys not getting a lot of hype under the radar, so I'm going to ask you, who could be that player this year? Not getting all that hype. Uh, a running back by the name of Lane Seastrom, running back in the game, he's awesome. He's, he's a home run here, meaning any time he touches the ball, he's a threat to go the distance. Look how to run away from those players right there. He's explosive, he has great balance, excellent eye uh, vision, he sees holes, he plays great cuts. And Robert, Robert spoke to him uh, at the Big 12 meetings and said that he's a great kid, has a wonderful personality. I think he, he's a guy you need to watch. Plus, they're going to put a whole bunch of voices in the room, and he's going to gain a whole bunch of yards. And Bryce Petty, that quarterback train is going to go over there. How about you? Who's your player? You might remember him as Joe Policeman from the Wars of the Board of Health episode, That's My Mama, Clemson's own, Sammy Watkins. A sophomore slump last year was spent at the end of the year, was injured. But this guy is a flat out player. He can fly. If he gets into the return game, this year with the departure of DeAndre Hopkins, that receiver, they're really going to focus. They're going to get the ball to Sammy Watkins. Kaj Boyd, one of the best quarterbacks in the country. Uh, Ted Morris, a great offensive board there. I think he's going to put up some big numbers and he has a chance. Which team poses the biggest threat to Alabama? Well, 
Plus, Tom Cafe, when you enjoy any of our gourmet pizzas, delicious sandwiches, or anything else from our menu, a portion of every bill goes to support the Lost Dog and Cat Rescue Foundation. Even if you're just yeah. enjoying one of our original beers, for our total class selection, you are making a difference. Hola. Did you need? Yeah. Kevin Agati, Sarah Walsh with you. Jason Hayward never lost consciousness after this. Wow. 90 mile per hour heat from Jonathan Dees. He'll undergo surgery today. <laughs> Braves have been rolling this summer, so the Dodgers, bottom of the fifth, taking on the Marlins, Zach Greinke, on cruise control. Greinke, 9-1, 2.14 ERA in his last 12 starts. He went eight strong, gave up an earned. Dodgers went 4-1, 27-5 in their last 32 games. Rays, Orioles, the deep ball. Oh my goodness. Chris Davis. Get up and get out. 411 feet. Adam Jones hit one. 451 feet. Davis leads all of baseball with 46 home runs. The O's win 4-2. Miguel Cabrera, the Tigers. Cabrera, he's batting. 418 with the bases loaded in his career. Knocks in three here. Second best in the last 50 years behind only Tony Gwynn, who uh, hit 444 with the bases loaded. Tigers win 7-1. The Red Sox, Giants, Will Middlebrooks. Has looked great since being called up for the minors. 11th home run of the season. Red Sox win 12-1. Rex Ryan should maybe starting quarterback today. First out of a preseason game against the Giants. Mark Sanchez not expected to take the field first as Geno Smith has taken on the first team reps this week. Ryan kinder in his assessment of the rookie practice Wednesday. Hey, it wasn't brutal, that's for sure. It was. Uh, that was a great day. I mean, I don't know if it was his best day, but because he's had a lot of good ones. He had a great one today. Um, but we'll see again, you know, how uh, how everything uh, is tomorrow. But we really don't want to put a timetable on it. Um, you know, eventually we got to name one. So, so we'll see. Uh, we are continuing to wait on that work. Uh, John Adams are back with us this morning because they just still have not officially named a clearly a starting quarterback for their opener against the Bucks. So what are you hearing about the inside track for that job? They know what they have in Sanchez. He's taking 75 plays in preseason games this summer. Geno Smith is taking 14. They don't know what they have in Geno Smith in game action. So this is going to be his chance to impress it that way that Russell Wilson got that chance for the Seattle Seahawks last preseason of the third game. He went out there, played very well against the Chiefs, and they gave him.